Book of Tov, today's daf is daf Zion in Baba Basra. We finished the first week of Baba Basra. Yesterday, we actually got down all the way until Amit Bey, Zion Amit Bey, so about seven lines from the top of the page at the two dots. <clears throat> Again, to learn for Achenu Chalbeis Yisrael, Unasun Basar Vashivya. We are still in the middle of a war. A lot of people are falling and getting injured. People are in captivity. We need Rachmei Shemayim for everybody. Ahushtara, there was a document, an IOU, the Asmi, of Yisomim. In other words, the father had apparently lent money. He died, and he left small children. Whenever you have Yisomim, we need small children under Bar Mitzvah. Once they're Bar Mitzvah, they're Gdolim. They're not called orphans anymore. So Ahushtara, the Asmi, Nafak Allah Tabra. There was a receipt went out. There was a receipt that was paid. So here the Yisomim, we're trying to collect this debt, but somebody showed him a receipt. Look, I, it's been paid. That's what happened. Amar Rav Chama. So again, Rav Chama is the one who learned all these halachas that we said yesterday. He said, look, you know, too bad. If, uh, if the house sunk in, unless it's so far below that the, uh, the second floor dwellers are in the airspace of the first floor, even though there's no place there, uh, the first guy could say, look, I don't want to build. Don't tell me. I don't want, you know, the uh, the the, uh, the upstairs guy could say, I don't want to build. I don't want to have anything to do over here. It's, it's too much trouble for me. I don't want to get involved with it. Like Tama 38, don't bother me. I don't want to get involved. I know there's benefits, but I don't want to move my stuff out. Even if it was a straw, a, a place for gathering straw, whatever. So you can't force me to move out and build. So here we had the same. So all these halachas were said by Rav Chama. And uh, we had them yesterday. Rav Chama, Rav Chama said this, Rav Chama said that. And we had the last case also on, on, on Amad Aleph, also a case of Rav Chama. And uh, we're going to talk about the halachas in all these cases. But uh, basically, we go like Rav Chama. And he says, look, you know, you can't force the other guy to build if he doesn't want to. Uh, so in this case, Rav Chama Paskin, like, you can't collect with the star. The Yisom cannot collect with the star. Why? Because there's a receipt. There's a, uh, there was a receipt that was paid. The Yisomim come, right? Or somebody on behalf of the Yisomim comes and says, look, uh, you owe this money uh, to the father. Reuben died and left the Yisomim and you're trying to collect the money from Shimon. You can't collect because Shimon's got a receipt. Well, we're cooking, but you don't tear up the IOU. The best thing to do with an IOU is after it's paid, just tear it up and that's the end of the story. Don't tear it up either. Why? I will, I mean, you can't collect with it. I did up a towel because there's a receipt that it's been paid, so you can't collect. Mikola Karina, we also don't tear it up. Why? The Chigod Lias, when Yisomim become of age, you know, nobody takes care of things for you like you yourself. When they get older, maybe Dilma Maisi Rai, maybe they'll bring proof of Marile and they will uh, discredit or invalidate the shot, the, uh, the IOU, the uh, receipt. Does you have a receipt against them? Maybe some guy forged a receipt, make it look like a receipt, and say, hey, look, your father assigned this, right? And, uh, you know, and he, he agreed, he gave me a receipt that it's paid, but the father's not here. The father's there, could say, is there, he could say, that's not my handwriting, you forged it. But the assumption don't know. So maybe they'll bring proof that it was forged and they'll discredit the receipt. Amalei, Rav Acha, Rei, the Rebbe Lervina, Hilchus, what's that, Locha? Amalei, Bekulach, Skrav, Chama. In all these cases that we've had on Amalei, in a base, all of us, like Chama, the Bar Mitabra, except for this case with the receipt. Why? The Sari Bishakla, Machazakina. We don't assume somebody's got a receipt. We assume it's valid. You don't assume that it's been forged. You don't assume that the item signed on the receipt. The receipt isn't not a receipt. It's a, a, a document is signed by witnesses. You don't assume that they're liars. Even in this case of Lachaz like Abchama, that in all these cases, we are, we, are, we, we, we are concerned for the person. And here also, Lachaz like Abchama, that we don't tear it up. In other words, if you say the law is not Gavchama, you say, oh, listen, he's got, the guy's got a receipt. That's it. You tear up the, the IOU, and, and that's the end of it. No, here he says the is like Gavchama too. You don't tear up the IOU, and you don't uh, collect with it either. You don't, tear, you don't collect with it because the guy's got a receipt. Wait till the children get older. Maybe they'll bring proof that the receipt was forged. Right, and he says, "Oh, it's They miss the tavra. My if it would be a good receipt. The boy, little pukei Why wasn't the receipt? Uh, why wasn't the receipt exposed while the father was alive? In other words, there's like what we call a reyasa here. There's a deficiency. There's a deficiency in the valid in the validity of this I, uh, this receipt. Why did the receipt only show up now? Why didn't the receipt show up while the father was alive? Well, we don't know how long he lived. We don't know the circumstances, but 
he's dead now. The receipt only came to four after the father died. That in itself is suspicious. Well, middle of, and since it didn't, didn't, the receipt was not exposed, was not produced while the father's alive. Shmami knows Zufiyafa, therefore, there's good reason to believe that it's been forged. So therefore, we paskin, he says, we paskin like Okama in all the cases, both on Aleph and on Beis here. Kofonos alivnos Beis Shar Videlis Lechatzer. Now we've learned before that all the people in the city have to contribute to the wall of the city, to the security of the city. We had that in Kofches and Babakama. We're going to talk, have it tomorrow, on tomorrow's stop also. What about the rabbis? There we're talking about security. Here we're going to be talking about taxes, et cetera, et cetera. You know, from here came the clergy discount. <laughs> this is the source of the clergy discount. You know, and there are certain towns which are predominantly Jewish in, uh, let's say, in, in the upper eastern seaboard of America. And, uh, you know, they used to give, uh, they used to be, we used to have a phone bill that would give, you know, a big clergy discount. 97% of these cities are clergy. Yeah. Uh, they figured it out. Another kid in Shashem. Anyway, everybody's a rabbi. So Kofano so live no special. So here we said the people in the city are forced or are, are, can be compelled to contribute. Not only we're talking about to the city, here we're talking about the chatzer. As we said, in those days, the apartments, the houses was around the chatzer. Like today where you have a... Um, what we call it, Michael, a binyan mishutaf, right? A, a bayit mishutaf. The people share in the expenses. There's a bad bayit, whatever. So here also, the people in the chatzir are off to contribute to the security of the entire chatzir. So you can build, what do you build there? There's not only a wall around it, but there's also a beishar. We call that in modern Hebrew, a butka, right? A gatehouse. Gatehouse for a shomer to sit there during the day. The delas and a door. You know, a door to close the whole place off. The chaser, everybody contributes. Not every place is fitting for a, a that you need a gatehouse for a shomer to keep there. It depends on the circumstances, as we'll see in the Gemara. Kovras lodnos year for a city. Not not until now we're talking about the chaser for the city. You can force them to contribute lachomer for the wall. Uglasai man the doors. Ubriach and even a bar. You know, a bar, a bar that's uh, going to shut the doors tightly and going to like a, a real security. Uh, a bar that goes across and, and doesn't allow the door to open it up. Shem Malil Omer, a local area where will come again. It depends on the city. Not every city is uh, necessitates a wall. How many, how long do you have to be in the city to be considered a citizen of the city? You have to contribute. Some people might just be passing through. You can't force them to contribute. So he says, Chodesh. If you live in the city 12 months, then you're a citizen. Kind of a bias, the base there. But if you bought a house in the city, then you're right away. Once you bought property, then you're considered part of the city or a citizen of the city, and you must contribute. If you didn't buy property, you have 12 months. We'll see the Gemara is going to talk about other time periods for various uh, for various obligations that a person has. So the Gemara is like, well, maybe the Beisham, so you're going to tell me that a Beisham is a good thing? We said you force the people in the Chatzair to build a putka, a, a, a gatehouse. For the Shomer. Is that a good thing? Bahu Chasida, there was a pious man. Gemara Tmur says that what if it's a pious man? It's either Rav Yudah Bar Rav Yudah Bar Loi or Rav Yudah Ben Baba. Yudah Bar Loi is the standard Rav Yudah in the Mishnah. In the Mishnah. So there's a Chasid, a pious man. Davi Rogel Elio, Davi Mishtoi Bade. Elio and Abi used to come and learn with him, talk to him all the time. Abed Beis Shar, once he made a gatehouse, Suba Mishtoi Bade. In other words, the reason is, is that the gatehouse, there's a guard there that sort of keeps away the anim. The anim want to come and knock on your door. You know, they give, can you give them a dava? It's stuck, it's stuck. Up. And if you keep the uh, anim away, that's a bad thing. So once this man, once this, uh, he was a pious man till then, you see that if you're a pious man, you'll speak to Elio and Avi, right? That's some partial David. Story could have been brought down otherwise. Just say, you're supposed to give money to the Why don't you say, what about the anim? He tells a story that he was a chassid. Well, Elio spoke with him until such time that he put up a base shar. So what do you see? That a Beishar, our mission says Beishar is, is a necessity. You have to have a gatehouse there for the guard. And here he says that, that once he put up a gatehouse on his chatzer, Elio stopped visiting him. So it depends on the nature of the gatehouse or where it's located. If it's inside or if it's outside. Rashi says, about halfway down to Rashi, if it's inside the chatzer, the grusel, the bisha, del is a chatzer, no. There's a door. Or on the chutzer, let's say picture a wall around the chutzer, and there's a door. 
then there's a guard house, a, a gatehouse that sits inside. So if it's inside, then it's not good. Because the door is outside and that's closed. And the honey is screaming, you know, tzedakah. And the base shah, the gatehouse, that interrupts his voice, right? That precludes his voice from being heard because there's a gatehouse. He's trying to scream through the door and then there's a gatehouse there. That's not good. That's probably why Elio and Nabi stop speaking to this chassid because that's not a good thing. But if it's on the outside, Rashi says, we're speaking where the gatehouse itself does not have a door, just a place for the shomer to sit. But it's a, it's a little structure, right? So it doesn't really have a door. It's like open. You could sit there. You know, they say the you know, security check, right? But they're just sitting there. So there's no door there. If it's on the outside, so the Oni can come in the gatehouse and knock and, and, and enter and bang on the door of the of the chatzer and say, screen out, stucca, stucca. So if the gatehouse is on the outside, that's good. That's what our mission means. You should contribute to a gatehouse on the outside, which allows Aniyam to come up to the door and scream. Ibai Samuel Gamar says, above and they're both on the outside. Look, Kasha, how this like Del So I said, does it have a door? <coughs> does it have a door that he can't, you know, that, that if, if it has a door, then he can't get in, right? He can't get in. If he can't get in, again, he's he's uh he's he's outside, he's precluded from coming from his voice being heard. So if it's got a door, he can't. If it doesn't have a door, they're both outside, but it doesn't have a door, then he can come up to the door of the chatzer. But if the if the gatehouse itself has a door, he can't get in, even he can't get up to the uh the door of the of the chatzer. So it's both doesn't have a knob or a handle or not. If he's got a handle, then he can open up and come in. If it doesn't have a handle, he can't get in. How about if both of them have a handle? Is the handle on the inside, then he can't get in. If it's on the outside, the Rosh says, if it's on the outside, only person can open the nichmas, right? It's like a, like a handle or you know a knob. So you put it in there. Okay, so it all depends on the circumstances of, of the structure of the, if, if if it allows the Ani to come up to the door of the Chatzar to scream, then it's fine. If it doesn't allow him to, no good. So Armish is speaking about where it allows him to come in. And in that case, he put a Chatz, he put a, a so you see, even a person who's a Chatzar, who's a pious man, can make a mistake. Made a mistake. He didn't mean, to, I'm sure, to push away the Aniyam. But when he put up the gatehouse, that uh, caused the Aniyam to stop, and therefore he stopped stop visiting the first of the wide lines of the Gemara. So, the Gemara is saying that 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 the that you can force everybody that the said, not all, uh, not all courtyards are fitting for a gatehouse. So that's what the Bryce is. The Bryce brings down the same opinion um, uh, of Rav but the Bryce expands like it always does. Ela Chatzar Smuchlish Yisrael only a chutzah which is right next to a shusarabim. So then you have to be concerned. You need a geyser because people are going to, there's a lot of people there. They may come into the chutzah and you don't, you want your privacy. You don't want people coming in. You don't want gun of them. So you need a gatehouse there for a guard. El chutzah, it's not, it's not, a, it doesn't abut on the shusarabim. And it was just about, then it's not, you don't need a gatehouse over there. Rabbanan didn't make that difference. Remember the Rabbanan say you could force them to put a beishar. Shem Malil says, no, nah, not every place needs a shah. The Rabbanan say every place needs a shah. So even though it's not, it, the, the, uh, the chaser does not uh, join Rosh Hashanah, it's not right next to Rosh Hashanah, but sometimes people push, and sometimes even though it's right next to, the overflow of people may come, and therefore you always need, every chaser needs a gatehouse and a door. Uh, and, a, and a door. For a city, you have to contribute. Everybody's forced to contribute to the wall of the city, the Mishnah said, to the wall. And for the doors, I guess they're you know, big doors, gates like, and uh, and a bar. So Rabbi Shemuel says, and again, in our Mishnah, Rabbi Shemuel says, no, not all cities need it, right? Not all cities need it. But again, he, in the Mishnah, he didn't say which cities do, which cities don't. Just like before in the Baraisa, he expands and says, which Chatzar needs, which doesn't. It's next to just a robin. It needs a it needs a uh, a gatehouse and a door. Otherwise, it does not. What about a city? Don't all cities need a Don't all cities need a uh, a wall and a door? Local iris local Not everyone is fitting. Not everyone needs a door. Ella Only a city that's near the frontier. When it's near the frontier, you're out in the open there, 
and it's more likely for bandits to come in. It's not near the frontier, and really the does not need a wall. So if you're not near the frontier, if like in an inner, like an inner a city that's inside, well inside the borders of the uh, country, does not need a uh, does not need a wall. Uh, Rabbanan, Rabbanan says, even in the city, even if you're not facing the frontier, sometimes bandits, troops, groups of, uh, of uh, outlaws will come and invade the city. So every city needs a wall. But I mean, Rabbi Lazar, obviously, in history, not all cities had a wall, right? They're walled cities, but maybe most of them had. But with the, the, the halachas that we have about uh, the, 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 the most of Shul bin Nun, right? We talk about these things if it's a walled city. Lagabi Purim, Lagabi other halachas. That's um, uh, that's that's from the days of Yeshua ben Nun. But normally, there, every uh, city is normally had a wall to protect the inhabitants of the city. Boy, mean Arab loves the Arab Yochman. Let me ask the final question of Yochman. Shane Govan, when they collect the money for the wall of the city, the Fina Pashtun, do they go according to the number of people, right? So, like you know, if you have your water bill now, then your your water bill, they ask you how many people are in the house, right? You're only two people, like uh, many of us, uh, right? So they charge you more. If you got ten kids in the house with you, you know they allow for that too. So everything goes according to the number of people. So do they go according to the number of people? You know, as many people are in the house, you go by that. According to your income, when they collect money for the wall of the city, how do they go? Is, is it like an income tax based according to your means, or is it according to the number of people? Amrle, he says, Lafi Mamangovan. Go according to your means, according to your income. And he said, and when uh, when Reb Lazar asked Reb Yochanan, and he said, but Lazar Bani, Lazar, my son, I guess he spoke to him like in a loving way, Baba Masmoros, uh, put the nail this halacha with nails. In other words, make it a firm halacha. In other words, that, that's that's really the halacha. Rash says, he saw Lazar and Cain below Tazmena. Only go according to means, according to income, don't go according to the number of people. In the house or in the family, he can have some say. Why did Rabbi Lazar ask him this question? He asked it in this form: Shane Govan, the Fikur of Batam Govan. Do they collect according to your pro, according to your house's proximity to the wall? See if your house is close to the wall, or where they're going to come in to the boundary of the city. More likely, you'll be attacked first. So, do they go according to the uh, proximity of your house to the wall? Of them, the Fikur of Batam They simply go according to Shmach Mamon, according to your income. Amalei. So according to this gear, so he answered the figure of Batman go, they go according to how close you are to the city. The laws are beneath, and he said, Allah's are my son, Kabbalah's Rawas, nail this with nails, make it a firm halacha. Tosis brings out, he says, Pierce Tom, second last Tosis, the Nosan Aniam Krogum Yosem Kokum. In other words, according to this, the ones who are closer to the uh to the wall or to the boundary of the city have to pay more. So poor people who are closer pay more than the people who are far away. But rich, rich people who are far away, give more than the poor people who are close by. In other words, he's sort of taking both opinions into into account. That rich people, rich people, everything else being equal, rich people give more. But if rich people are far away and the neem are a problem, they still give more. Every rich people give more than poor people in general. But uh, but uh, if you're comparing poor people to poor people. Uh, the ones who are closer to the city, uh, to the boundaries of the city, pay more than those who are farther, really farther away. Uh, pardon? It's a, in the wall. Yeah, they live in the wall. They're really, they're really, uh, yeah, like Rechav right? They lived in the wall. Also, you know, you're you're making such a thing like, okay, rich people, go, you're putting everybody in two categories, rich or poor. You know, there's a, there's a thousand categories in between. You can imagine the bureaucracy of uh, handling all this, you know. But that's how it was until modern times, until computers and stuff like that. Uh, I remember my, my, my father always used to tell me that the how did the Polish authorities come in to give you taxes? They would come in and look up your shots. You know, they, they checked how much uh, how much. So the Jews would always hide their their skull right away. You know, they would Silver. come in. Huh? Silver they hide. Yeah, no, I'm, no, no, in businesses, yeah. in businesses, they would come in and see how much stock you have. You know, they had no way of of tracing you know sales and things like that and income and things like that. So they. They, uh, they they made an assessment, right? Like uh, sometimes like Mas does here, right? They just make they make a good guess and they collect based on that. This wasn't an easy job. Rabbi Yehuda Nasiya, Rabbi Yehuda Nasiya, Rabbi Yehuda, this is probably Rabbi Yehuda's uh, probably Rabbi's grandson. Rama Deshur Adrabanan, he put a tax on the rabbis. 
Okay, he tell you see us from he said, listen, you also have to pay for the wall of the city. Al Khakam, come on, like everybody else. I'm only Rashak Shrek said, Rabbanan Shrikh is Rabbanan don't need any uh, to be guarded. The Sivit says, Esprem Khal Yirbun, I will count them, they will be more than the sand, like the sand on the seashore. Um uh, um Esprayman, who is he talking about? Rashi the the Pasik says, until him, I will count them, they'll be more than the sand on the seashore. He, who's he counting? Even with Sadiqim, if you're counting the Sadiqim, the Hafish Mikhala, you think that they're more Sadiqim than, than there are grains of sand? Hashukal Yisrael Ksibo. All of Bene Yisrael entirely, not just the Sadiqim. It says Kahola Shell Svasayom, it's only equal to the number, to the amounts of, of uh, sands of grain. All of Bene Yisrael is equal to all the all the uh, sand on the seashores. So Sadiqim Atzmam, Echol Mehakud, that Sadiqim themselves be more than that amount, can't be more. Sadiqim is only a Portion of an Israel, that's what it means. As Brahma Ma Sam Shasikim, I will count the good deeds of the Sadiqim. Those good deeds, Mechol Yubim, will be greater than the amount of sand. The Kabbalah Homer. So you look at it this way, Machol Shem Shemu, Manachol, which is less than there's less sand than there are good deeds of the Sadiqim, Megan Alayam, that protects the the seashore, the sea, where less Rash and the page says, Vulo Homer gets a Shasanti Hold Bulyam. The sand is a wall, a barrier against the sea. So just it, it, it you know guards the sea from coming in, uh, from uh, you know from being damaged from the land or or vice versa. So machol shemuet, which is less than the good deeds of the tzaddikim, protects the ocean. Masem shal tzaddikim shem rubim. So their the tzaddikim's um, their, their good deeds, which are more than that, lo kol shkain shem gidim, I'm certainly protect them. Again, Michael, here you have that. Says that the, the the good deeds of the city can protect them. It doesn't say that protects them. But this gets into the whole issue. You could always argue this point. You know, like how it seems that it doesn't protect the rest of us, right? They're good deeds. And here we're well, talking about good also deeds. Making, also making an assumption that Sadiqim and Rabbanan are, are the same. Thing. Exactly. Who are we talking about? We're talking about every yeshiva bach. We're talking about every. We're talking about Sadiqim. You know, it's it's very hard to categorize this or to apply it in real okay. life, right? So question. So certainly that would protect them. So therefore, Rishloka is said to Rabbi Yonasiya, you had no right to tax the rabbis in the city, uh, the tzaddikim, he says Rabbanan, he's mixing up Rabbanan and tzaddikim, right? right? You're right, because he says, put a tax on the rabbis, and he says, look, it says that tzaddikim don't need protection. He didn't answer me, he said, well, the tzaddikim are only a small subset of the rabbis, or not even rabbis, right? They could be a tzaddik without being a rabbi. doesn't make that difference. Okay. So, this is local, so therefore, so that, that's where Shlakish's like, point. Guessing on the Bielkman, when Reish Lakish learned with the Bielkman, he came for a Bielkman who was eventually his brother in law, learned with him, and they fought with him, and learning, why did you give him that Pusik? He said, That Pusik teaches you that the good deeds of the Tzaddikim are greater than the grains of sand, and therefore, just like the sand protects the ocean, that's what he says, it's like a wall for the ocean, so it keeps the ocean away. So, the same way, uh, the Tzaddikim. Their mice and protect them. Why did you bring that story? Why did, I'll tell you a different pasuk. I'm like my time a little time. Why don't you bring this pasuk? We're on the last line now of Zion of the days. Ani choma. The pasuk says in Shir Hashem, I am a wall. The shadai can be close, and my breasts are like towers. Ani choma zu Torah. That's what we're talking about. The shadai can be close. So what do you see over here? The Torah is one thing, and the tamid chacham they are towers, meaning they don't need the wall. They are towers above the wall. They don't need the wall. They are towers above the wall. So. Why don't you bring that bus to show that the Chachamim do not need protection? Notice we go from rabbis to tzaddikim <laughs> to Tamir Chachamim, right? You can fairly use interchangeably. Reish Lakish on the top line of Ches Hamanal, Reish Lakish Sava like Darish Rava. He darshans that pasuk differently. Ani Choma Zu Knesset Israel. The wall is made in Israel. Shalom Dos Elu Batek Knesset Israel Batek Midrasho. So notice the towers that above the wall are the Batek Knesset and Batek Medrash. That protect the general population, right? Because it's kulam shavlin yin chama, but go to matzvah and the time of Now that's why is Knesset Israel like a wall because they protect themselves. They keep away from being defiled by the goyim. So he dashes the pasuk there, but he doesn't dash it with tamir chacham versus the rest of Bnei Israel. Rav Nachman or the gears I think is Rav Huna, Rav Chanan Bar, no, Rav Chanan Bar of Chista is his gears. Rav Chanan Bar of Chista, not Rav Huna, Rav Chanan Bar of Chista, or he has another gears that is Rav Huna, different gears here. Ramakaga Rabbanan, he put a tax, a poll tax. Poll tax mean for every person. Every person had to pay, 
know, as many people there are in the house, you have to pay tax for them. On the rabbis, you were over, you you uh, transgress uh, both at the Raisa in the Chomish in the Torah, Torah's Moshe, and in the in the Biyim, and on the holy writings. You are over, you are over, uh, in all these by putting a tax on them at the Raisa. How do you know that you're over on the Doraisa? It says, Af amin, right? Of course, that's in Zosa Bracha. You love the nations. Even when you love the nations, Kol Kadosh should be a Decha. But the holy ones of B'nai Yisrael are in your hands. You guard them. So Hashem he says, even when you were nice to the other nations, you were still especially nice to the Kadoshim, to the Tzadikim of B'nai Yisrael. Amar Moshe Kadosh Bracha. What did Moshe say before God? Even when you hold dear, you love the nations of the world, May all the Kedoshim, the Israel, be protected by you. They, they nestle at your feet, like at the Harsinai, they nestle at your feet. So, as that tells you, shows it right there, that uh, the Tzadikim are protected by God. Uh, they don't need any other protection. Yeah, or B'nai Yisrael, yeah, okay, but he says, Rashi says, Shel Yisrael, the Kedoshim of Yisrael, not, not, not all of Yisrael, but the Kedoshim, the holier ones. Again, <laughs> going from Rabbanan, Rabbanan to, to um, uh, what was the next one? Rabbanan to Tzadikim, to Tamei Chachamim, to Kedoshim. Behem uh, Tukul Reglecha. And they uh, they nestle or they cut at your feet. What does it mean? They cut their feet. In other words, they hurt their feet. Uh, uh, try, you know, uh, they 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 uh, damage their feet. You know, they bruise their feet by going from city to city and from country to country to learn Torah. They make all this effort. That's the idea of here. So because of them, they will receive your your holy words. That they will. Discuss the Torah, the words of Hashem. So that whole pasuk refers to the ones who learn Torah. He says, because he says, right, Haim, they, who are they, the ones who nestle? These are the Tamil Chachamim. So again, it doesn't refer, in case you think that Kedosh means that all of them, Israel, we're not all that holy, right? This is only the ones, the Tamil Chachamim, are, who uh, cut their feet and, and make all this effort to learn Torah. So number one, he told him, you know, pardon? Yeah, okay. <laughs> We're all charedim. I mean, we're all charedim. You know, the problem with it all is is the definitions. You know, uh, in this country, I, I touched it at times. In this country, they measure the, when they say the charedim population. What defines a charedim? How you define this charedim? If you're a member of this shul, you're probably not considered charedim, even if you are charedim. If you went to a charedim high school, you know, like my grandson went to a charedim high school, it's considered charedim high school. Uh, um, you know, a, a lot of schools are considered Haredi, whether it's uh, a Marava or um, the other Nahora. Uh, there's a lot of schools that are considered Haredi. But then he went to Hester, learning yeshiva. He's in the he's army now. He's in he's in, he's in Yehud and Shomron. He's in here in a fighting unit. So, so he's a Haredi in the army. How, how do you define it? It's very hard to define it. And this is we know there's all kinds of Haredim. There's Haredim who work. There's Haredim who drive trucks. And there's Haredim walk around all day with their talis at 12 o'clock noon. We, we, there's all kinds. And this Haredim were at Sadiqim. You were really learning Torah Yom and Belayla. So hard to define. So you say, you're getting the Haredim. We're not, but he doesn't mention Haredim. He mentioned Sadiqim. He mentioned Kedoshim. He mentioned Tamir Chachamim. Right? There's also an issue with the stuff about who's being protected. Right, them. that's what I said. No. You don't tax no, them, no. but you tax everybody. Right, right, right. No, 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 we're going to come to that. That's what this yeah. the, that the Gemara on um, Baba Kama, uh, on uh, Baba Siyah Kramches, uh, is going to be expanded here. Because here we're talking about, they don't need a guard, but, okay, so why, do, if they're if they're learning Torah so much, why aren't they protecting us with their Torah? Here it's Mashbet that they're not. But we're going to yeah. see about that. We're going to see. So again, it, it, you can't prove anything. You know, these things are all debatable. Different opinions of the Gemara. Look, we even had, what, this all started off by saying that Rabbi Yudhanasiya did put a tax on the rabbis. Rish Lakish complained to him. Now Rabbi Yochanan says, why didn't you bring down this Pasuk? You know, he said to Rabbi Yochanan, why didn't you bring this Pasuk? I learned that Pasuk differently. So here, another case, this Rav Nachman Bar Chista or Rav Huna, whoever it was, or Rav Chista, put a tax on the rabbis. They said, oh, you're over on the Torah. This is the Pasuk in the Torah. Avchobev Amin, that's the Pasuk in Zosabrach. You're over on that. 
Now we continue on the Gemara. And if you're over on the Rehim, the Sim says, Gam ki yitnu by Goyim. Even when you'll be among, when you will be put among the Goyim, Atah kap same, I will gather them now. Yachelu ma'at mimasa melech besarim. What does that mean? And they will be diminished. The Pasha would say, we don't know what that word means yet. The Yachelu ma'at, they will be a little bit diminished or defiled uh, from the burden of the king and the office. Amr Ula, so Ula says, Pasik said, Balashan Ramas, Namar. Really written in Lashon Haki, you have a few words in, in the Chomish, which even the Torah is in Lashon Hakodesh, like Yikar Sa, Dusa, Saftas Me. There's some words in there that are uh, that are actually Aramaic. He says this pasuk in the Bim is also Aramaic. Never why? Itanu, not Tanu, not not Kiyitnu, but Gam Kiyitnu, meaning if they will learn. See, Tanu in Hebrew is give or be, or put, right? This is in Tanu. If they learn, Kulu. If they all learn. I'm going to get them all. That's it. You're 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 safe. If only some of them, then they will be relieved of the burden. Uh, that what it means over here. Yechol means that they will be relieved of the burden. Meaning the ones uh, only if some if they all learn, then you're all, you're, you're all going to be safe. You don't need, if only some of them learn, so they will they will uh, uh, not be forced into the burden of the mouth of So here we're talking about. Don't forget, here we're talking about a financial requirement. We're not talking about a physical requirement of going to fight in the army. You know, all these things are about fighting, protecting the city. So you say protect the city. Well, if they're tzaddikim, they don't need the protection of the wall. We're not talking about fighting in Muhammad's uh, mitzvah. And therefore, this whole debate can go on and on and on. And you'll see everybody else's, you know, everybody's opinion is, you know, where you sit is where you stand. So, you know, it, it's all according to your, your views. Everybody has a, has a way to explain their, their opinion. So he says, so therefore you see that if some of them, if only some of them are learning or tzaddikim or whatever, uh, they will be uh, they will be relieved of the of the tax burden. Alex will be over on the Pussing and it says, Menada below Bahelach, Lo Shalit, Lemir Malayim. These are various taxes. Menada Bolovak, we're going to explain what they are. They cannot be imposed, they don't have the authority to put this tax on them. Who what are we talking about? Rabbi Yudah, Menada Zumar Samel. That's the regular uh, demand of the king. Rashi says, uh, regular, whatever the king's taxes, you know, the king used to come to the city, tell the Jews, collect so much money. So that's that's one thing. Uh, that's the poll tax. You pay for every head. That's like an income tax. It's not like our Nona that we have in modern Israel. Our Nona refers to the real estate tax. Real estate tax. In the Gemara, the Arnona is the, is the uh, income tax. Uh, that you give, uh, you know, ten percent, five percent, whatever. So goes uh, the So therefore, and uh, by the way, this right, as Rabbi Rabbi was mentioned about this. What's the is the Torah? Does the Torah believe, or does the Torah teach us a product progressive tax? Like we're used to taxes that are progressive, meaning the poor pay a lesser percentage. As you make more money, you pay a higher percent. You know, pay ten percent, fifty percent. You pay tax. So that's, that's part of the progression and the regression. It's a progression and regression. Or do you have a flat tax? Like, you know, remember Ronald Reagan. So it's mashma from the fact that Meiser basically teaches us that it's a flat tax. You give 10%. That's the general idea. Whatever the percentage we talk, we don't talk about progressive. So mashma from the Torah, that's more of a, a flat tax situation. Or uh, tax that we have is, uh, is um, fat. Mom. Mom is a flat tax. It hurts the poor more than the rich. Because they have to pay the same 17 or 18 percent, whatever it is now, uh, no matter what, right? So that this is a flat tax. Anyway, so these things, these kind of taxes, the king's tax and the um, and the poll tax by the head and the uh, income tax uh, are, are are to be relieved. Uh, the the tzaddikim or the uh, these people, the people like that, the tzaddikim, the hamidah chachamim, the rabbis, uh, the kedoshim, they are relieved from that tax. So he said, you're over on this. Repub, another story. So. Both in each case, we have certain rabbis impose the tax, certain other rabbis said, You're wrong. But Papa Rami Kari Kharata, now this is Gemara, we really had this in Bama Nasiya, but he's going to expand a little bit. Rami, Rami Kari Kharata, I asked me, when they, when they dug new ditches for water, he imposed this tax on Yasomim, even on young, mm -hmm. young orphans. Maybe you won't find any water. You won't be able to draw up any water. Like it feels like you know, the bucket. Maybe you won't you won't be able to bucket any water over here. And if that's the case, uh, that you took money from the pool from the Yisomim. I mean, Yisomim cannot be mocha. Yisomim don't ride mechila, so you stole money from them. 
because they can't be mochel. Everybody else can be mochel. Listen, we're investing in it. It doesn't work out. It doesn't work out. There's no water. But you saw him can't be mochel. I'm going to Michel Shkin. I take the money, man. I take the money from you, son. He midvo, midvo. If we find water, then they then they take the water from there too and they contribute. Elo, if we don't find any water, Mahad really like giving back their money. So therefore, there's no there's no problem with that. I'm going to view it on Kol Agli Gapa. This Gemara is the same Gemara that we had on Kuf Ches and Bamatsia. Everybody has to contribute. Their, their Rashi said, like Mahad is for like the, uh, the breaches in the city wall. Here Rashi says it's the gap is here is Lashari Homas Air, us and Los to put them doors. It means whatever it is, whatever is necessary to close up the wall of the city, whether it's doors or breaches, everybody has to be now feel me else mean even from orphans, because they are also predict Abra same thing we had before. Rabbis do not need to be guarded. Okay, I call it Pasya. Everybody is included for digging wells. I feel Rabbanan, because they have to drink water too. Everybody has to contribute that. That's only if they have to contribute, if they don't have to physically contribute, as people don't go out themselves to dig up, rather they hire workers to dig the wells. But if they go out like a chus, like in, in, in numbers, and they and the, all the rabbis, you know, everybody who's going out, they're not hiring people, but they're saying everybody has to come and help with a shovel. And it's improper for, to treat the rabbis that way, to be demeaned by having to dig with everybody else, so they don't have to be included in that. If it's a question of money, they do have to be included and they have to contribute as well. Rav, um, we're at the two dots now, about halfway down the page. Rav, uh, Rebbe rather, Pasuk Hotos Meshim, says, the years of famine, Rebbe opened up the storehouses of stored food. Omri said, Yikansu, Bali Mikra, Bali Mishnah, Bali Gemara. All the ones who've learned Torah should come and if uh, you don't have any food, come and take. Uh, Bali Mikra, the people who learned Chomish, Bali Mishnah, the ones who learned Mishnah, Bali Gemara, the ones who learned Talmud, Bali Alacha, the ones who learn Alacha, Bali Agada, the ones who learn uh, narratives, you know, stories, uh, uh, you know, uh, biblical stories that teach us lessons. Amaratsim shouldn't come and take. They're, they're not entitled. So one man by the name of Yonas Ben Amram came in and he pushed his way in. He came in. Amalah Rebbe, Parnasaini, please give me some sustenance. I need some, I don't have any food. Amalah, then he said, my son. Karista, you read Chomish Amalo? Love. No, I haven't learned Chomish. Shay said, you learned Mishnah Amalo? Love. No, I have MK Mapra. So why, how can I force? How can I feed you? you? You're not worth anything. You haven't learned Torah. Amalo, Parnasani Kakel to go right. Feed me like you would a dog or a raven. Even though these are not nice uh, animals, Rosh says that Ore is, uh, is mean even to its children. And uh, therefore, Barshalam gives it, you know, fine, he gives them his food and, and they have to pick it out of the dung. And the Kelab. Uh, it's a very small amount of food. It's got to last in the stomach. But the point is that even for lousy animals, you know, who aren't such a tzaddikim, you, you, you feed them. So feed me like a dog. So, uh, so Parnas says, so it was a good argument. And Rebbe gave him food. Bus enough. After this, Rebbe Yosem what left, left. Yes, Rebbe. And Rebbe thought about the Messiah. And he was the Messiah. But Omar, oily, shenasati, pati, lamaritz. The guy convinced him to give him food. He says, Don't, I'm no worse than an animal. But he felt bad that I gave my bread to Amaratsim instead of giving it to Amir Shachalim. Amalafan, as he said, even though the man was poor, right? They were all poor at that time. But he said, I'd rather feed the Tamil Shachalim. Amalafan of Shimon Barabi. So Shimon his own son said to him, Shemi Yonas Maram Pamichal. Maybe he's only one of your students. You didn't even realize it. Shane Rosal Yonas me covered a He doesn't want to get a no from covered a and say, Feed me because I learned Chomish. Feed me because maybe he doesn't want to be fed. He doesn't want to have any pleasure from, from Torah. Uh, all his days he never wanted to get any cover from he didn't want to get any you know any honor or uh, any gift because of his Torah but they checked Ashkel and they found that so was it I'm Rabbi I'm Rabbi and Rabbi said you can't sort of let everybody come in because I cannot discern who's learned Torah and who's not and maybe this uh, this uh, modest person did not want to take credit and get and get some benefit from his Torah so everybody can come in Rabbi from my Rabbi goes to the street I'm Rabbi Rebbe, originally, when he didn't want to give, why didn't he want to give? You say, the guy's poor. What's the difference if you can learn Torah or not? Because he says, all our troubles come because of the Amaras who don't want to learn Torah. It means really not that they just don't have time to learn. They don't want to learn Torah. You know, they, they sort of reject the Torah. Kahu, like a story. Now, this is an interesting story. The May Kalila Rashi says it's the, the amount of money that they needed for a new crown for the emperor. He was collecting money, I guess, for a fancy golden crown with uh, ornaments and everything. And uh, Tar Lamelech Kaiser, right? They wanted, they were collecting money for that. You know, it's even in those days they had fundraising. 
so the Shara Tivya, the Shara Tivya, they made this tax on the inhabitants of Tveria, where Rebbe lived and where there were many Tzadikim. Also, we come here, Rebbe Kimper, Yomule, Lace for Rabbanim, but don't let the rabbis also contribute. You know, the Zamaratsim in the city, kid, let the, we all have to contribute. The rabbis should contribute too. Amalu, lo, am, lo, he said, no, the rabbis don't have to contribute. They, this is a tax that the uh, Romans have um, have imposed, and the rabbis don't have to pay there because they are protected. They don't have to. They have to be included. They get the rabbinical discount. Amalei, our so we're going to leave. <laughs> Haven't you heard that? You know, if you make us do this, we're going to leave. We're going to exit the country. Amalei, our kohen, we're leaving. So Amalei, our kohen, leave. Who cares? Our kohen, our kohen, half of them left. Half the Amaras in the city left. The Yua Palga. So they, when they left. The tax that was imposed was forgiven. Hey, Rashi says, not only Yopalga that it was imposed on us, but Mochala Melech de Mei Chatsi the Silk Man. So the, let's say they said they won 10,000 uh, kronins or whatever, $10,000. So when half the people left, so they said, okay, 5,000. Uh, also on Yopalga, so the other the other Amaratsim came, the other the ones who remained, they said, come here, and they said, I'm going to play lesser of them, let the rabbis contribute now. It's only 5,000. I'm going to who? Lo, they're not going to contribute. Arokin, so he says, we're going to Arokin, we're going to leave. Arokin says, leave. Arkukul, so they all left. The whole city emptied out. Amras left. Pasha Ukubus, there was one fuller, one cleaner was left, and uh, he was the last one there. Shadu Akobes, they put the entire tax, the whole five thousand was left. He said he has to pay. Arakobus, he ran away then too. I got to pay everything. He ran. They all left the city. Pakukli, at that point, the the whole tax. Was relieved. They 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 uh, they abolished it. You don't pay any of the tax. Um, the Rebbe, Rebbe said, It would only be for the rabbis in the city. There was no tax imposed at all. The whole imposition was only because they wanted to say soft miss. So Rebbe went from there. Again, the Amorites we have to assume are people who were against the Torah. Come here, be here. Back to the mission. The mission said, you know, you have to if you're if you're a, a citizen of the city, you have to contribute to the wall, right? So come, how long do you have to be in the city? That you're considered a, a, a citizen of the city if you're there 12 months or if you bought a property. As we said, for a minute, let's say you had a caravan of donkeys or camels, a very smart Malkin that's passing through the city. In other words, Velana and the, the people leading leading the herd or whatever you call that, uh, and they slept overnight in the city. And all the city became over the Abadazara. And these people who were passing through with their herd, this caravan, also were found to be Obdi Abodazara. So they are not considered part of the city. And if they're the whole city is Irni Dachas, the rule of Irni Dachas is that what? That everybody in the city is killed by the sword, right? Like, like decapitated, they're killed by the sword. And uh, the, all their assets are burnt, right? So, uh, but these people are not considered part of the city. So therefore, what do you do? They're like individual idolaters. And hang the skill, you kill them with skill. And individual idolaters killed by skill, and their money is saved. They can give their money to their heirs. It's not destroyed. In the Shlashim Shlashim, if they're there for 30 days, if this caravan of people who were found to be idolaters with the rest of the city, the Yerdi Dachas, are there for 30 days, then they're considered part of the city. Hang the Sayyaf, then they uh, they get the sword, like everybody, like the other part of the Yerdi Dachas, and their money is destroyed. So what do you see over here? 30 days is all you need to be considered uh, a, a part of the city. Or we're talking about citizens, the people of the city, or you're talking about dwellers, inhabitants of the city. In other words, to be a citizen of the city that they, they, they impose upon you, the building the wall, etc., then you have to be a citizen of the city, so 12 months or buy property. But to be an inhabitant of the city, to be considered for the Yerni Dachas, you only have to have 30 days. Get a time like you learn. If you make an edit, you're not going to be enough from the people of this city. Whoever's there for 12 months, you can't have enough from them. In other words, if he's there for less than 12 months, you could have enough because he's not on ear. To be a citizen of the city, a person of the city, got to be the 12 months. So if he's there 12 months, if he's there less than 12 months, 11 months or less, then mutter, mutter, then you're not have enough. If you make an enemy, Yoshe, or the inhabitants of the city, 30 days makes you an inhabitant of the city. Uh, but to be a citizen, so you got to be there 12 months. Pachos Mikan, then you're allowed to have it up. So for everything, do you need 12 months? 
You're saying to be a citizen that you have all these requirements, you have to be the 12 months of a tiny we learn shloshing on top. If you're there 30 days, you have to contribute to the soup kitchen, food for the poor. Shlosh if be there three months, the kupa for the tzaka, for the kupa tzaka that everybody has to contribute. She should be there six months for clothing for the poor. Tisha, if you're there nine months, you contribute to the Chaver Kedisha, the Kvura. Shnei Masar, if you're there for 12 months, then the Pase year, that's for the walls of the city, you know, for the protection of the city. When we say 12 months, we also mean for the walls of the city, for the for physical protection of the city. For all these other things, it goes according to how, how long you're in the city. In other words, but you're really only a citizen if you're there 12 months or if you bought property. All right, we'll pick them here tomorrow, Mitzvah Shem, near the bottom of Dach Chesam Yom Tov the Kulam.